Hi folks, so what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to do a simple on shape exercise and we're going to use it uh, or do it by using a tablet instead of a desktop, okay? So we're actually going to be using our fingers to create the model instead of obviously using a mouse when you're working on a laptop or a desktop, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring you over to my screen here. I'm going to go down to my visualizer and here is my uh, tablet, okay, ready to go. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to open up the app. So I'm going to scroll up, you'd obviously have the app downloaded at this stage. I'm going to click on the Onshape app. And what I'm going to type in, once it opens up here, you'll see some previous models, okay? If it brings you to this screen, great. If it doesn't, sometimes it might actually, excuse me, go back here a second. There we go, it might bring you to this screen instead. So if it does bring you to the screen, just click on My Onshape, and it'll bring you into any models that you've previously done, okay? So you can see here, I've got a list of models that I've kind of previously done okay what we're going to be doing is maybe something a little bit simpler today okay a nice little quick video so to start a model what you're going to do is the plus on the bottom right hand corner you're going to click on this and click create document and you have to give your top a document a title okay so i'm going to just call it, call it on shape practice and click okay so what that should do now is it should bring us into kind of the modeling area okay Kind of parametric modeling area so you can see here it's just loading up nearly done there now lovely okay so on the left here we've obviously got our design tree our top plane our front plane our right plane i've covered those in a previous video i've got my three planes here visible in the middle which is where we're going to create our model and i've got my viewing cube on the right and some editing tools up here on the top left okay if i click on the viewing cube i can click any face okay i can look at the front of an object once it's created and so forth I'm going to put it back here to isometric, okay, which is a pictorial view. Just move that up a little bit. And what I'm actually going to do today is I'm going to turn off some of these planes to make things a little bit more visible, okay? Sometimes they can kind of get in the way, okay? Planes are like surfaces that we're going to draw. So what we're actually going to draw today, I'll zoom out there very quickly, is this guy, okay? It's a simple orthographic drawing that you might cover in first year or second year with a class. And we're actually going to model it today, obviously using Anje, okay? So to model that, if we actually look at the object here, it's kind of made up of two structures. We've got the base structure here, which is essentially a rectangular uh, cube or a prism, okay? And this structure up on top that has a sloping edge as well, okay? And one is obviously, this one is sitting on top of the other one, okay? So that's what we're actually going to start with today, all right? So I'm gonna start off by creating this block here down on the bottom that has a length of 75, it has a height of 25, and the actual depth or width is 50, okay, where you can see the measurement here, 50, 25, and 25, adds up to 50 at the top. So we're going to use those to actually model it, okay? So, zooming back in there on our screen, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to model it on the front plane, okay? So I'm going to turn off my top plane by clicking on the little eyeball symbol, and I'm going to turn off my right plane. And there's my front plane. Now I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click on front to get it nice and square on my screen. And now to start a sketch, what I have to do is click on the little pen tool here at the top left. And then it's telling me down here where sketch one is, select the sketch plane. And I'm going to select front. Now you mightn't see here on the screen, the quality mightn't be great, but behind front is after coming in there, sketch one. Okay, so I'm ready to start sketching now. And I'm going to start off, okay, by sketching. I'm sketching on the front plane, so looking in the direction of arrow A, which is an elevation. I'm going to sketch a rectangle that is 75 long, and 25 high and then i'm going to extrude it to give it a depth and width okay that's going to be 50 okay so i need to make a rectangle that is 75 long and 25 high so i click on the rectangle tool okay just go back in there you can see it here corner rectangle you can see it's activated and what i'm actually going to do oh i'll undo that actually again just to repeat that again so go back in here select the front plane select the rectangle tool there we go now we have the origin in here Okay, this little dot. So what I'm actually going to do to start off with is I'm going to click on that dot. Now my sketch is activated. I'm ready to start sketching. And where lots of people make mistakes when they're doing on shape is they'll press somewhere on the screen and a line will just come out of nowhere, okay? We're active on a sketch now. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to press somewhere on the screen and keep my finger pressed on the screen. And you'll see a rectangle will come in. And there's the rectangle. Now I'm not going to let go until okay until i'm happy with kind of the shape i want so about there i'm going to let go now and there's my rectangle now i want to apply a dimension to that to make it 75 long and 25 high so i go back up here to the pen symbol and i'm going to scroll down until i find the dimension symbol right here it kind of has two arrows okay click on that my dimension tool is active 
So I'm going to click on the line, just press once, let go, and a dimension should come out here to the right hand side. You can see it's saying 27.253. I want it to be 25. So click on that and change the dimension here to 25. Now make sure we're in millimeters as well. Click OK. Now I want this line to be 75. So click on the line. You can see it's after coming up in the middle. So I'll just click and hold and drag it down. And once I let go, 75, enter. Okay. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on this viewing cube and I'm going to click on isometric. Okay. So it's just after bringing our, our rectangle, okay, into kind of a, an isometric view. Okay. And what we're going to do now is we are going to extrude that out, okay, to give it a width or a depth. So I'm going to come up here to the little kind of round symbol, okay, just beside the pen symbol, click on that, and it's giving me two options. I can either revolve it or extrude it. So if I click on extrude, you can see here it's going to start extruding already, making it a 3D model. And I can either grab the handle and pull it, or like that. I'm going to pull it back in just to show you there, okay. But we want an accurate measurement, okay, that'll be kind of guesswork there. And our depth is over here, okay? So you can see here, extrude one, okay, we want to add a new surface. So I'm going to go depth, change 36 point whatever to 50, click the green tick, comes out exactly to 50 millimeters. And to accept that then, I click the tick here at the top. And there we go. Now at this point, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come over here. I kind of have my model now, so I'm going to turn off my front plane. And there's our model. Okay, click on isometric. There we have it, right in the middle of our screen. Now what we have to do, that's the first part done. We kind of have the base block done. Now what we have to do is we have to add in this section here. Okay, now there's a couple of ways you could actually go about it. Okay, I'm actually going to do it. Um, there's probably a quicker way than doing the way that I'm going to show you now. But I'm going to do it by extruding up a block. Okay, if you imagine, I'll just sketch it in here. <clears throat> Great to sketch that in. And I'm going to remove a surface. So just very quickly, rough sketch there. So what I've done is I'm actually going to create a block that is going to be, if we think of the dimensions here, it's saying it's 25 in here, but the length from here to here is going to be 50, and the width from here to here or the depth is going to be 25. So I'm going to create a sketch on this top surface here of another rectangle that's 50 long and 25 in depth or width. Okay, and I'm going to extrude it up and you can see this bit here. But the bit that I've kind of just kind of done in with my pen there, it's going to be a whole block. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to remove this section by doing a cut. Okay, you could do it a quicker way in one step, but just to show you how to do a cut, that's the purpose of this video. Okay, so we'll start on that there now. <clears throat> So the surface I want to initially sketch on is this one right here, this top surface. So I'm going to click sketch. It's asking me to select the plane. Now the previous time we selected one of these planes over here, this time I'm going to select the surface. <clears throat> so I just clicked on the top surface there. You can see a box has come in saying sketch two. Now because I'm actually kind of looking down on top of it, I'm going to change my viewing direction. I'm going to click on the cube and I'm going to click top. And there we have it. Okay, just going back here just to show you again. Nice and easy there. So I'm going to start in this corner over here. So click on top and I want to do another rectangle. So click on rectangle. I'm going to press on the screen now, anywhere on the screen, you'll see a little dot will come in. And you can see the dot and I want that dot to map onto this corner here. When it's on the corner, let go. Once again, press anywhere on the screen. And there's my rectangle. And I want to make the rectangle roughly the right shape. So there it is, happy with that. Now I'm going to apply a dimension. We've done this previously in here. Scroll down, click on dimension. I'm going to make the width of this line 25, just dragging it out there for neatness, and I'm going to make the length 50. I was pretty close. Okay, it doesn't matter how far you drag those out. And just if I go into my isometric view again, there's the block. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to extrude that upwards. And it's going to be going up a height, okay, if I come to the sheet here, a height of 50 millimeters. So go to our circular symbol here, okay. Click on extrude, and you can see here we can start dragging it up. Once again, change the dimension over here to 50, click on the tick, accept. And there we have it. Okay, and you can see here we're getting in the right direction. Now, what we have to do is just remove this triangle here. Okay, and the triangle obviously has a length there of 25 and just created on the shape. So, we're going to have to remove it this time. So, once again, I have to create another sketch. So, I'm going to come up here, I'm going to click on the sketch symbol. Once again, it's asking me to select a sketch plane, and now I'm going to click on this surface right here. Okay. 
Once again, I'm going to look straight at it. So I'm going to click on front because I'm looking at the front of the object and here's the surface. And what I want to do now is I want to create a, a triangle. So to create a triangle, I'm actually going to use the line this time at the top left. Click on this guy. Once again, press on the screen anywhere. The dot will come in. I'm going to start right here at this corner. When it's on the corner, let go. I'm going to press on the screen anywhere and not letting go. A line will become active and I want that line to go along here. You can see it's mapping onto the midpoint. Okay, I'm happy with that because I want it to be in the middle because I know that's 50 long. So when I'm mapped onto the midpoint, now I don't actually have to apply a dimension of 25 to it. I'm going to keep going because my line is active. Press on the screen anywhere. Don't let go. I'm going to come all the way down to this corner. When it's at the corner, let go. Once again, okay, I'm on an object that I've previously drawn. It knows the length from there. So, okay, so it's coming in fully defined. And to close it up then, I'm active on this point and I want to join it up to this point. Press anywhere on the screen and bring it to this point here. And there we have it. We've got our rectangle. Okay, or sorry, our triangle. So I'm going to go out here to isometric. You can see our triangle there. This time, instead of extruding, or sorry, extruding out, we're going to actually cut it. So we're going to go to our tool here again for our 3D modeling. Click and extrude again. And this time, instead of adding something on, what we're actually going to do is we're going to remove. So if I click on remove there, you can see if I go back to add, you can see here, okay, it's telling us, okay, uh, Boolean operation failed to return a valid part. That's okay, but we want to just remove. So if I click on remove here, okay, I can actually grab that and it'll come out further, but it's obviously realizing that I only need to go so far. Or I can change the depth here, which would be 25. Click on the tick. I'm happy with that. For the sake of it, I'd always go a bit extra. It doesn't matter. There's 27. Okay, that is removed. Click the tick. There we go. Okay, and there's our model complete. Okay, nice and easy um, 3D modeling video done there, guys, where we have created this object here. And what you could do then that's quite helpful for photographic is if you wanted to see what the front view was, okay, initially I said that the front view, the elevation, would be this surface here and this surface, okay. If I come into my model here, click on the cube and click on front, there we go, we have it. If I want to see the right view or the end elevation, click on that surface. Okay, and if I want to see the bird's eye view looking down on the top of it, there we have it. And that surface there, which is really important, even though it looks like a square in this picture, if I click isometric, we can actually see it's a slope. Okay, so quite helpful there. Uh, hope you found that video helpful, guys. That is the video complete.